What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 62 of the Foundation First Fitness Show. Today, I am joined by a very dear friend of mine, uh, known her for quite a few years now, and we've just kind of built this awesome relationship around fitness and training and just kind of challenging each other's minds um, and really trying to get to the root of, you know, what helps people move better and, you know, what's helping people build foundation and just kind of explore movements from there. So uh, I'm not going to kind of step on your on your intro, so I'm going to let you introduce yourself. This is actually Gail Garceau, but I'll let her kind of fill you guys in on everything else. So tell everyone, I guess, a bit about you, uh, what you do exactly, and a bit about how you got here. Um, well, I'm Gail, so I we're here at the Eccentric Studio in Montreal. Um, that's how I met Bobby. Uh, we were working with a sports team, and he was doing their strength training, and I was brought in for flexibility, mobility work. So I teach eccentrics, so it's basically a dynamic stretch workout program. Uh, so it's not, uh, it's not simply like a type of stretch, it's, it's a way of stretching and rebalancing your body through, through different dynamic stretching movements. Um, so I got into eccentrics, uh, it's based here in Montreal, but people all across the world do it. Uh, I got into eccentrics Personally, for myself, I used to be a competitive athlete and discovered eccentrics to help me with my volleyball training and immediately just noticed how much better I felt. Uh, it was, it's really, eccentrics is a type of stretching, so you're actively stretching your muscle, meaning you're constantly moving your muscles while you're stretching, rather than a lot of how a lot of people kind of know stretching and the reason why stretching has yeah. such a bad rep. Uh, it's, it's not, we're not holding any stretches. So, you know, you just kind of grab your arm and you pull at it or you grab your leg and you do a few stretches like that. You never feel that great after and it kind of weakens you as well. Uh, whereas in eccentrics, we're actively moving through the range of motion of all the joints. So you're, you're doing, you're stretching every single muscle mm -hmm. in the way it's designed to move. And so once I started doing that during my volleyball training, I would do it in between, especially in volleyball, you're playing a lot of tournaments. So it's usually what are you doing in between the games that really matter and make right. you more powerful for the next game. And you're not just getting more exhausted throughout the day. You need to actually be able to sustain yourself. So I started doing some of these eccentric exercises in between my games and immediately I felt not only stretched out and felt better, but I was stronger. Mm -hmm. I was building more like elasticity into my joints rather than just kind of yanking at my muscles and, and feeling weaker. I was feeling stronger. That's and interesting. But you got into eccentrics because of volleyball. It saw yeah. that as a benefit. Yeah. Where do you guys fit in? When I say you guys, I mean eccentrics. eccentrics. Yeah. Where do you think that fits in with athletics overall? Like what part of the athletics do you think that's improving on? I would say overall recovery, okay. absolutely. But you know, for any athlete, you need to have range of motion of mm -hmm. right. all your joints. I mean, 100%. any athlete, any person really needs this. But um, athletes, especially, if if you're not able to move through the full range of motion of your joint, you're missing out on a huge potential for mobility and for absolutely. strength. Yeah, and I know you just you talk about that a lot in the yeah. Um, I know I talk about that a lot, yeah. which is why I kind of like loved it because I was like, oh, this is yeah. perfect. We're going to be able to for sure kind of blend this together. So you worked with hockey. Let's say you take that hockey player. Yeah, what kind of stuff are you? Because I know. So for those of you out there who don't know, uh, eccentrics is still, to my knowledge, yeah. a, kind of an integral part of the training regimen that goes on with the Montreal Canadiens. If I'm yeah. not mistaken, during their so training camp, during the training camps, yeah. always there, and that's where we met initially. We were working. Uh, kind of, we met at one of those camps. We met at the, you know, training camp a couple of years back. Yeah. Um, what kind of stuff? What kind of stuff are you working on with them? Because I know right. we, I know, you know, as a hockey player, you are in that tight position. I always talk about that mm -hmm. with a lot of my, you know, Instagram clips or anything. With even with a lot of my athletes, it's always about getting out of the kind of seated position on the ice mm -hmm. and getting up into this more standing position to kind of, re kind of relieving a lot of that tension. But what do you? specifically working on with them is it similar stuff or is it i mean yeah definitely hips okay. that's we're doing a Huge lot one. of hip work mm -hmm. um groin hips uh to help with just overall relief of, of tension in their hips but the thing is with with any single athlete we're working with whether it's hockey or runners or you know baseball players we're really doing a full body stretch 
so you know I have so many clients ask me you know I have this this hip pain can I, can you give me one stretch for my hip and I'm sure you've looked up look for you know key stretches for wherever your pain might be but no like matter that. what no matter what if we're working that hip we need to lift the arms above the head because we need to pull the muscles up out of the hips as well as work into your ankles and pull the muscles down away. So working your hamstrings, your thighs. So no matter really what we're focusing on, we want to rebalance all the muscles. Mm -hmm. And because even though you might be feeling something in your hip, it might be related to your shoulder, it might be related to your ankles. So no matter what, we're, we usually do about 20, 25 minute stretches with them. Um, and we're doing the full body. We do spend that extra time really focus on helping with their hip. Because, you know, if your hips start locking up, you're going to have a smaller range of motion and right. suddenly your stride starts getting shorter. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Which is the huge, which is like literally yeah. the biggest killer for you if your stride starts shortening up. So. Exactly. So you want exactly that extra, that extra little inch that you can push off. You want to take that space. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, someone that's, because right now it's like weather, I mean, today aside yeah. is starting to get better. Um, yeah. A lot of people are out there running. A lot of you probably are out there uh, getting your runs in. What do you think something, what do you think is a runner should be focusing on? A should runner. They, should they be focusing on something before? Or we, yeah. Is there something before that's better or is it better to do it after? When should they be doing kind of a, an eccentrics routine? Right. Well, eccentrics, you want to think of any like flexibility, mobility work, eccentrics, kind of the 20% formula of whatever your training is. So if you're training, you know, 10 hours a week, you want two hours to be focused on your mobility, recovery, and just working and focusing on your range like of motion. That. Yeah. That's a good number. That's yeah, a good one. exactly. Because if you're just focusing on your sport, running, for example, it's such a repetitive, so much repetitive motion. So you're just working inside your hips, your legs, your calves are only going through limited range of motion mm -hmm. um, over and over and over. So you keep repeating that same movement on the same joints over and over, going through that limited range of motion, you're going to start getting injuries. You're going to start seeing uh, your tendons are going to start acting up, getting inflamed, knee pain. It's because you're not moving the muscle through its entire range of motion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean stop running. Like I love to go for a run, but I know if I only am running, we're not, we're not going for a run. By the way, we're not. not I thought we were going for a no, run. No, we're after. not going for a run. I, I brought I my rain be, jacket. I definitely will not be running. Okay, <laughs> next time, next time. Maybe it's nicer. Out. Um, but when I when when you're just doing the same thing over uh -huh. and over, you're not using the muscle as it's designed. The muscle is designed to go through its full range of motion, relax, contract, mm -hmm. go through the full range. So when you stop doing that. The muscle's not doing as it designed, doing what it's designed to do. It starts, you start feeling pain. You're going to start feeling, that's your body's way of telling you something's not operating properly. So all you simply have to do is take it through that range. Mm -hmm. Let it relax. If your muscle's in a constant state of contraction, the tendons that are attaching your muscle to the bones start getting inflamed because your muscles keeps pulling on those tendons. So you need to take the time to release it. So I personally, people love doing eccentrics after they do their training. You like it before? Well, I like both. A mix of both. It okay. feels great to do it after. Like you get that nice release and right. then you're more, you know, inspired to go train again the next day because you're feeling good. But if you start doing it beforehand, you're going to prepare your muscles for the I'm, movement. And I've been big on that. Yeah. Like for those of you listening, I've been huge on the preparation yeah. before. I started doing a lot more preparation myself just before I did anything. And mm -hmm. I just felt that, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it was a potentially some of the age thing too, as you start, mm -hmm. once you cross that 25 barrier, everything just kind of starts yeah. creeping over hill and you st your body becomes a lot less forgiving. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been big on foam rolling mobility stuff, Yeah, you know, and I do a lot of the stuff that we kind of did because yeah. I always joined in, uh, yeah, you always join in a class. So I liked kind of just like seeing what you guys were doing and kind of picking from some of those exercises yeah. that I really liked. So, and I noticed a big difference before I'm not as good afterwards. I think that's probably one of the areas that I have to, right. You finish your workout. You're like, I'm just like, I'm good. I'm all done. right. Yeah. All you can really do is take off your shoes and that's a feat on its own. Sometimes yeah. I remember, but, uh, no, it really makes a difference. And if it's that, you know, the day after a workout, if you're feeling like crap from your workout the day before mm -hmm. you're doing something wrong, you want to, you want to feel good. Just be like, I think the common mindset in society and culture 
especially the American culture, is no pain, no gain. Go hard, force, force, force. You're going to get results. But if you're feeling like shit, it, that's no way to live. And it's also not how we have to be programmed to you, think. You, by the way, you can't say crap or shit on the show. But oh, I love did that. I that say was, both those things in one sentence? Both those things, like literally <laughs> within the last minute. And I'm sitting there and they're going like, all right, well, this is going into the... Um, <laughs> okay, good. No, it's it's but, fine. We can keep it. I'm just going to have to like let them know that there's some like vulgarity in this. Oh my God. Podcast. Am I that person? No, no, no. 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 Okay, cool. It's already happened before and I was just kind of, I didn't want to stop it. So I'm like, we're good. Let's so just crap going. or shit. Well, I mean, you can't see either, but it's done now. So <laughs> okay, cool. Good it's pretty much open season. All right. Now now. All right. We've already got the tag of approval. So, <laughs> um, so, but if you're feeling like that the next day, you're, first of all, you're not going to want to keep training. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be motivated to keep going. 100%. And you're also going to eventually down the line, you're going to have worse injuries. You don't just like get arthritis when you turn 50 years old. It's years of not using your body properly and not treating your joints as they're designed to function. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's probably one of the interesting things that I've, I know it's been probably one of the areas that I've been harping on a lot of my athletes for is just kind of seeing that the, not the five months ahead of them season, but right. the 15, 20 years down the road when yeah. their careers are done and your body's just finished. And the same thing goes for a lot of my clients. It's, you know, focus on trying to reduce the effects of the workout throughout the rest of your day. Exactly. You know, if your workouts are stopping you from walking up the stairs, uh, doing work at home, like you can't move, well, then what was the point of it? Yeah, like, I understand exactly. no pain, no game, but I don't understand how there's... Yeah, like you see, a, like what is strength? You see a guy who can't even like lift his arm up to get something on the top shelf. Yeah. And he's jacked, but it's just, he can't do something my 90-year-old grandmother can do. Yeah. I don't really see that as strong or impressive. Yeah. So, so I think we have to kind of redefine like what is strength, what's our end game 100%. here to be able to do that and show off for a few years or to be able to to have joints that are well Function designed years. into your like 80s and 90s. 100%. And enjoying your life and uh, be functional. 100%. Appreciate um, that. And I think also people underestimate the value of, you know, pain aside, uh, having strong joints for a lifetime aside, people undervalue the the effects that having mobility and range of motion mm-hmm. can give you for performance. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, I think was one of the, again, like I said, it was just, I noticed that the better our players were moving, just the better they performed. Yeah. Like it was clear as day. So I really like the century. So that's why I wanted to get this podcast together because I think a lot more people should be you know, exploring options out there. You know, mm-hmm. I don't like, I myself don't think that I have the answers for everything that yeah. someone should be doing. You know, it's, it's awesome to be able to kind of collaborate. Yeah. Do a bunch of things. You know, I just think a lot of people need to be doing more variety of exercises for ver- varying up things. You know, everyone just kind of focuses on sticking in that narrow window. Like I get a lot of my guys, for those of you who don't know, you may not know, uh, you're going to be hired quite a bit this summer for a lot of my oh, guys. Cool. So, <laughs> Did you not know that? Did I not tell you that? No, no. no. Oh, well, now well, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Are you big timing me on my no, show? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> You're just throwing me under the bus here. I have to be prepared for you. Um, cool, fun. So, yeah, I mean, I like, like, I'm going to be throwing all of my guys in there because I, I firmly believe that I don't have the answers Absolutely. for structured mobility. Yeah. And so I'd rather hand them off to an expert that is doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, well, and vice versa. Like I, I'm great at full body range of motion, but when it comes to isolated strength training, stability, I know Bobby's incredible for that. I appreciate that. And, uh, <laughs> some more coming your way as well. <laughs> but I also, you know, I'm also, if, if you've got an injury and you've got pain, you want to make sure that you're, you know, following the 20% formula, you're taking care of your body. But you also, if you've got a shoulder thing or a knee thing, go check it out with a physiotherapist, mm-hmm. get it worked on, go see an osteopath. They're going to help you work on that, that specific area. But then ultimately, how does that area interact with, with the rest of your body? Else. How long, how much have you been compensating? And I think really looking at a full body program will start helping you integrate that. It's the movement. reintegration of the reint exactly. Everything. Right. Yeah. Hundred percent. So where does someone go to get more information? Because I know you said that, you know, you guys are pretty much spread out all over the world, which yeah. I think stunned me the first time I walked into the head office. 
Uh, <laughs> actually, the first time I walked into the head office, I was shocked by how like massive Eccentrics was. I yeah. was almost like, I thought this was just like one little studio, yeah. in a little tiny office. <laughs> and we started touring the whole place, and I'm like, where's your studio? Like, oh, our studio is actually somewhere completely different. Yeah, because you this guys is our studio, headers, not our office, exactly. Which is crazy enough, because I was like, <laughs> that is insane. And then I saw the map of where everything was, and I started noticing you guys were like literally located pretty much everywhere in the yeah, world. Yeah, Asia, Russia, Australia. Which is crazy. All over the States. Which I I was still blown away. <laughs> but if someone doesn't have access to a local studio or, or a trainer, trainer yeah. what do they do to get in, get a hold of the information, get a hold of some maybe some courses, some classes? For sure. So definitely check out eccentrics.com. Um, you can look for a live trainer. That's always nice to help you see where you're in balance and work on that. Mm-hmm. But then other than that, you'd... There's lots of workouts on YouTube, but then there's also Eccentrics TV. So I spend a lot of, I just finished filming a few workouts this week. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm filming a lot of workouts for athletes. I'm doing activation workouts, doing uh, hip releases, um, and they're all on Eccentrics TV. So they're, you know, as short as 15 minutes, as long as an hour workouts that you go. And, you know, whether we're doing it for your hips, for your lower back, you're still going to see that, yeah, we're going to have more concentrated for that one area, that that one joint, but you're gonna always There's see gonna it's something. full. It's a full body stretch. Mm-hmm. Whether it's 15 minutes or 60 minutes, it's a full body stretch because that's one thing I really want um, athletes especially to get in the habit of trying to always do the full body work because just because the site of pain is not the source of the problem. 100%. So when you throw at a larger net, you're going to be a lot more likely to catch whatever the whatever underlying the issue, issue is. is. And, and you're going to feel just so much better release. Right. Um, and also, back on to kind of what I was discussing before about how mobility helps with performance is, you know, I see, I've worked with like even some goalies before who have, you know, have trouble doing something simple like a lunge. You know, let's say you're trying to get your lunges deeper. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get stronger so you can hold more weight when you're doing your lunges. So you just keep doing lunges over and over. You start adding more weight and you're not seeing the results. I worked with one of these guys and his ankle, his foot had no mobility. His, His big toe was completely locked. So instead of spending an hour trying to, you know, stretch his hips and knees, we actually just worked on his feet for like 45 minutes. And within 45 minutes, he could Everything bend changed. his knees, no problem. Right. Like if you if you walk around and lock your ankles, try bending your knees. It's impossible. Really tough, yeah. So you start unlocking that ankle joint, which is something you might not have thought of before because ankles, like you don't look at a guy's ankles kind of and say, hey, nice ankles. Oh. So you're, speaking of ankles. <laughs> Sorry, I'm waiting for 10 Meg's on inside, inside joke. Yeah. Inside joke. <laughs> Meg, if you're listening, my ankles are showing. It's for you. <laughs> <laughs> You don't like look and say, oh, that guy has nice ankles. I'm going to go to my ankle day today. You don't think like that, but ankles are the most underestimated joint. There's so many injuries that are caused by just weak ankles and that can be prevented just by, and so much power can come from your ankles, that extra little bit of push that you get as a runner. That's something you should be focusing on every single day before and after your runs is strengthening your ankles to help when your ankles are stronger your knees are going to have less impact. Your hips are going to have less impact. You're going to be able to absorb mm-hmm. the shock of every single step you take. I'm still laughing that Meg's probably listening to this I dying. Know. I know, I know, I yeah, know. For sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for letting me kind of drop in here. Yeah. Uh, half unannounced, but... Um, this is a blast. This was fun. Yeah. Was Thank Thanks you so for much. Having, thanks for having I'm me. I'm going to put all of the information on how to, A, get in touch with Gail. If you are in Montreal and want to book a session and want to kind of jump in on one of her classes, uh, all the other stuff, the Eccentrics TV stuff, I'm going to get from you. I'm going to drop it in there too. So you guys yeah. have access to all of that stuff as well. For sure. I would highly recommend that everyone at least give this a try because it, it really is one of those things that... You know, it's funny because there's a lot of stuff that we talk about, you know, with training, like, you know, most athletics training is so limited to that high performance athlete range. And, you know, we don't really explore other age categories. And then there's the bodybuilding that it's in one category. This is really something that you could kind of see really across the board. You know, athletes are doing this. High performance athletes are doing this. Um, You know, I think it's one thing too that I'm impressed 
I'm more impressed that it is starting to get integrated a lot more Mm -hmm. is the mobility work because I know like 15 years ago, even 10 coaches, you know, you were done with your workout. Okay. Or you like, you're warming up, do a few arm swings. That's what I was doing. Yeah. That's what I was doing too, which is why now when I look back at it, I was like, Oh my God, what were we doing? And you see how it affects those guys who are now like, Hey, my so. boy Tom Brady still playing all about 40, it. 42, 43 now, and it's just all daily about work, mobility daily work. work, daily low, work. Low, just... low weight mobility. Like if you're going to develop more power mm-hmm. when you have that extra range, if you're you know throwing the ball from here versus throwing the ball from back here, that's it's not going to just... happen if your pecs are tight. Yeah. So. All right, got to wrap things up because I think we're literally running out of time on my camera here. <laughs> it was such a pleasure. It was such a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much for letting me come again. And uh, until next time, guys, keep building that foundation. <laughs>